My name's Grant Courtney and uh, I'm a third generational meat worker um, and I've been asked by the Queensland branch of the Meat Workers Union to MC today's events. I'm also the federal president um, of the Meat Workers Union. Um, that we've got several speakers here today so I'll go to those straight away. The first speaker that we have um, is Brian Crawford, the Federal Secretary and also the Queensland Branch Secretary. The second speaker we'll be having today is Tony Mooney, Labor candidate for Herbert. And the third speaker, the, and the most special speaker as far as I'm concerned, is Tiffany Curl, um, one of our delegates from the Townsville Abattoir. So Brian, um, if you'd like to come and give us a few words in relation to our concerns with the live animal export industry, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Grant, and, th and, and welcome special guests There is strong, credible economic research that demonstrates the irrefutable link in job losses in the Australian meat industry and the continual expansion of the live export trade. A study conducted for the AMPC in 2000 concluded that the live export trade could be costing Australia around 1.7 million in GDP, lost GDP, and 280 million in household income and 12,000 jobs. I don't need to remind everybody that the meat processing in Queensland is the biggest manufacturing industry in Queensland and second only to coal in income. It is the case that in the last 30 years more than 150 meat processing plants have closed in Australia with an estimated loss of 40,000 jobs. Some of those to mention, and I'm talking about in the, certainly in the North Queensland region, um, is the Pentland Abattoirs, Ross River Abattoirs, Quira, Mount Isa, and more recently Innisfail. We say that this is a direct result of the live export trade. In 2010, we saw the Kalani and the Pittsworth Abattoirs shut in Queensland alone. Both of these are a multi-species processing plant. All of you would be aware of what happened recently at the Swift plant in Townsville. Reducing the operation from a seven day operation to a five day operation with up to 300 jobs permanently lost. In addition to this, that all uncertainty was also contributed to by the, amend, uh, the number of stand down days that occurred at that particular plant up over the last 12 months. And for those that are uninitiated stand down days where those people could have lost up to 25% if not more of their wages on a consistent basis weekly. I don't think I need to explain to the common person on the street how difficult it is to raise families in the current economic situation let alone in a situation where you have lost 25% of your income in any particular week on a regular basis. So that in itself, you know, explains the seriousness of we, what we say is a serious situation. And we say very clearly that the live export trade contributes to this significantly. We also had a situation at the Swift plant at Dinmore where over 200 jobs were lost. And also the live export trade, we say, contributed to this also. That plant went from a seven day operation now back to a five day operation. Our clear message is this, live exports, exports jobs. Regional communities suffer as a consequence of that. Livestock process in Australia is worth 20% more to the economy and that's a proven fact by studies that have been done. Our position is clear. And our message is clear to all sections of government, both state, local and federal. Our position, we'd like to see the phase out of the live export trade by 2015. And we say, by doing that, would give some consistency and security to the people in the meat processing sector, certainly in Queensland and in Australia. Thank you for your time. I don't have 40 years experience uh, in the meat industry, but I am the son of a meat worker, um, a butcher, uh, and I know how important the meat processing industry is to this country and to the city. 
Townsville was established first and foremost uh, over 150 years ago as a pastoral port to service the pastoral industry. We became very much a, a meat processing uh, centre from those early days. When you look at the, those chilling facts of over a generation, we've lost 40,000 jobs in this industry and 150 plants have closed down. You can appreciate, I'm sure, uh, in the media and to the wider community that the, the union has a very important role to play in advocating for the retention of the industry, for the strengthening of the industry and for doing something definitive about the export of live cattle. Uh, the simple phrase, exporting live cattle is exporting jobs, I think is the clearest message that I can give here today and I'm, I'm here to lend my support to this campaign. Uh, nearly 300 jobs have been lost here in Townsville alone in the last year. We can't afford that to continue. It is just plain dumb. In exporting the live cattle, it's affecting not only the jobs and the livelihoods of the people working at the plant, it's affecting the wider industry, the business community. You know, the, the baker, the seller of the news agent the product and so on. That reverberates through the whole community. It is just plain common sense to be supporting this program, um, this campaign. So I join here today with the union to support it. I wish Hello. My name's Tiffany Curl and I'm a meat worker from Swift Townsville. Today I've been asked to speak about the effect of live export and what it has on, on this meat industry. In February this year, we received the news that our two shifts were being reduced to one. This was caused by the lack of cattle the previous year due to live export, which caused the processing season to be cut short that year. During this time, it was an anxious wait for me and my fellow co-workers while the decision was made on how many jobs were going to be lost. This wait only added to the stress many of us were already facing as we were going on to our third month of being out of work. This was not the first time we've experienced a long layoff period due to live export. For some of us, it was a relief that we were able to keep our jobs. For, but for 267 people we know, who no longer had an employment, it was just another hit. Over the years, workers have struggled to make payments on their mortgages, on their rent, on their cars, and even to put food on their family's table for the reason of live export. Well. Swift Council employs 600 local workers all who participate in supporting local business and the council economy. Even now, when a live export ship leaves our port, hundreds of workers worry about the effect this is going to have on their future. Therefore, the impact of live export on the meat processing industry has a twofold effect. This effect is not only on the families, but also on the local businesses within the council community. Body. As workers of Swift Townsville, we are concerned that every year our jobs are slowly being eroded away by the effect of live export. These cattle need to be retained within our region so our business can perform to the full capacity which in turn will reinstate the loss of jobs and more jobs. All we are asking for is a viable and fair deal that keeps our jobs, our members and our income within the community. Thank you. Um, we, we thank everyone for attending today, in particular the press for coming out. We know it is, it, it is an election time of the year and uh, to have the press here it is, it is very, very good to push our concern. We, we, we thank our meat workers in our meat packs. They, have, they are air conditioned. There is a good occupational health and safety arrangement with the AMIU, so these guys are air conditioned, so that won't be a problem. And we also thank, um, in particular, our members from Townsville, Tiffany, Brian and the rest of the people that have turned up today. Thanks very much. The Meat Workers Union is demanding state and federal governments work together to phase out live exports by 2015. Almost 300 local abattoir workers have lost their jobs to the crippling practice this year. Tiffany Curl has four children to support, but she's struggling. Her hours at the Stewart Meatworks have been slashed 
and for three months of the year she doesn't have a job. The longer you're out of work, the harder it, harder it is to keep your bills getting paid and being able to put food on your table for your kids. It's because too much live product is leaving our port and bypassing the processing plant. Boxed beef um, employs people, live export really doesn't. 267 local workers have lost their jobs this year, but the problem is widespread. By 2013 this cost will jump to 2,180 lost jobs and 260 million in lost state income. But producers often prefer live exports. When market conditions are good, farmers can get more bang for their buck. Our position, we'd like to see the phase out of the live export trade by 2015. The Meat Workers Union wants the federal government to introduce a chilled meat trade so that the product is processed in Australia before leaving on ships. And we need to ask our federal colleagues to, to assist in that area. So that in the end that live export isn't impacting on our jobs and our jobs actually staying here. Renee Henry, 7 News. Meat workers are calling on the federal government to ban the export of livestock by 2015. They say the trend of exporting whole beasts means that abattoir jobs are on the line. Regional abattoir workers fear they're a dying breed. We have seen Townsville go from a seven day operation back to a five day operation. Uh, I don't think you have to be Einstein to work out where it's happening. The union says 300 jobs in Australia's north have got the chop since the start of the year, all because of the growing appetite for live exports. If Good evening, I'm Samantha Heathwood. Townsville's meat manufacturing industry is calling for a complete ban of live cattle exports following hundreds of job losses within months. Workers today appealing for support from local politicians to protect their livelihoods. They came wrapped in meat packaging, symbolic of what's happening to their meat worker jobs, which are being sent overseas. An entire industry led to the slaughter. Live exports, exports jobs. Livestock processed in Australia is worth 20% more to the economy, and that's a proven fact. A small but passionate group of local meat workers rallying this morning to protect their livelihoods. In the past six months, more than 300 people have been laid off from the abattoir at Stewart. A devastating outcome which they claim is a direct result of a growing live export industry. We're seeing huge drops in valuating of, of boxed beef because the cattle are going overseas in their raw state. When the Swift Meatworks cut its operations back from seven to five days a week, employee Tiffany Curl felt uncertainty. Weeks later she watched with dismay as scores of her co-workers were given the axe. They're losing their livelihood because of live export. The industry wants to see a ban on live exports by 2015 and as the election campaign continues, employees are hoping the right people are listening. We're going to do all in our power to get as much meat processed in this country rather than have it uh, exported away because for every one of those cattle that exported out of the country it's a job that goes with it. Though achieving a total ban on exports could prove an extremely difficult task. Many farmers choosing to send their cattle overseas instead of out here lured by greater profits in an industry with a relatively bleak outlook. I'm hoping that we can come to some fair deal that everyone is a winner out of it. So we're not losing their jobs and they're not losing money either. Jason Schwab, Win News.